So Calculated is our I Love Irish track of the week. We are absolutely loving it, Erica Cody. Um, what's it been like this year in particular for you as a, as a songwriter and an artist? Um, have you found 2020 a source of inspiration or has it uh, been something where you look at it and go, what do we write about? What, what do we talk about? Oh, do you know what? It's been so challenging. And before, I, I know every creative was probably in the same boat as well. You know, I think as creatives, we get inspired by living everyday lives and going through situations um, that help shape our music. So having not being able to go anywhere and do anything and being stuck in your house is very uninspiring. Um, so it, it's a t it was a tough one because everything was so busy before the lockdown. It was kind of like, hey, we've this, we've this, we've this. Like we wanted to plan to release a single months ago. Mm. And then everything just started happening in the world needed, you know, everyone's attention for different things. So it just wasn't the right time. But because everything was so busy beforehand, you know, we're all so caught up in our own lives that I was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to take this time to just chill and to do the things that I love that I really enjoy that I haven't got to do in a long time. So whether that's, you know, playing Sims until four o'clock in the morning and, or just going for a walk and having a cuddle with my dogs until two o'clock in the day, like things like that, you know? So I think when you can, when you take that time for yourself to just do the things that you really enjoy that you don't usually get the time to do because life just gets in the way, sure. um, was a massive help in just kind of re resetting um, so I think, you know, this time around, second time around, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the things that I wanted to do the first time around, um, in the first line. So that's exactly what I'm going to set out to do. So you're, I'm a, well you're, you're, you're a Sims fan, are you? <laughs> oh my God. Such a Sims fan. I used to play the Sims in my dad's house every weekend, all weekend. We wouldn't go and if I didn't have a basketball match, that was grand because I stay home and play the Sims. Um, got a new expansion pack. Like I'd say every holiday, he used to treat me like Valentine's Day, I'd get an expansion pack. Birthdays, Easter. So like I was, you know, living the dream. That's amazing. Um, I hadn't touched it in years. So I was like, Do you know what? I'm actually going to have a go off this again because it was so good. Rebuild my, 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 my sim. Do you know what? It's not a bad world to be living in at the moment. The sim world is better than the real one. <laughs> and do you know what it was? What was weird is that I think I wanted to play it because I knew it was something I could control. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I could control what's going on in the world right now. So I'm like, right, well, at least I live in this fake world that I can control that'll make me feel a little bit better about my life. I totally get that. Um, you mentioned basketball there. Basketball's been a huge part of your life, a huge influence on your life. Um, yeah. And it, it, I heard you say in an interview as well, like in the game of basketball, you're only as good as your last uh, game. Do you see music like that as well? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think that's the kind of, See, I'd be quite a healthy competitive person just having grown up in a competitive sport my whole life. So I think I've always taken the principles and values that I've learned throughout the game into work and into music and into everything else that I do outside of the sport. Um, so for me, it's like, yeah, well, I really am only as good as my last game. I'm only good as my last gig and I'm only as good as my last single. So I think that's kind of what keeps me going and keeps me kind of wanting to, you know, do better and one up myself. You know, we can be our worst enemies sometimes. We can always be kind of, uh, you know, battling against each other, like ourselves um, and kind of putting pressure on each other. So in a way for me, it's, it's a way for me to just, you know, have a healthy competitiveness in myself in order for me to do better. So when I have that mentality, I'm like, okay, I want my next single to be better than my last single. And I want it to constantly grow because it's an industry that's constantly evolving mm. um, and constantly moving. So, you know, you have to, you have to kind of grow with the times. But with that said, I'm always going to pay homage to my 90s R&B. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dream collab, 90s R&B, who would it be? Dream collab. Wow. Um, I well, I, th I think Brandy for sure. That's definitely a dream club. And then um, my dream, dream club that I, you know, it's it's quite a far shot now, but Stevie Wonder, he's like oh, wow. my inspiration of music all around. I adore him. But you know, like the way things have been over the last few months with lockdowns and things like that, everyone's a lot more accessible. Why don't you just fire them a, a DM or, you know, try and... Just fire them a DM. Hopefully someone gets back. I literally, I, I seen him in 2009, I think it was. I was only like 13 or 14 at the time. Right. I sobbed the whole concert. Like my face was wet. My tears were, like my eyes were red. 
I I just couldn't keep myself together the whole because I was just seeing this like absolute legend. I didn't know any other fourteen year old that was in the room that night probably or even crying over you know Stevie Wonder. But for me, he's just such an influence and he's so amazing. Wow. And then I went to see him the last time he came over, and it was the exact same situation. I literally had to, I my my boyfriend took a photo and she put it side by side from the one from 2009 <laughs> and the one from 2019 and oh my god they're uncanny i just have blonde hair you look you're lucky you didn't get thrown out i'd say the first time around people went oh god look at that poor 14 year old she's crying because she's been dragged to a stevie wonder concert and she wants <laughs> yeah. to get home playing sims <laughs> And it was the total opposite like sims yeah. wasn't even on my mind that night that's funny that's funny <laughs> um I see you're you're repping the the Bulls there, the Chicago Bulls. I am, I am. So that you're... was actually a purchase after watching the Last Dance in like oh. two days. <laughs> how, how <laughs> good multiple was that? Of Jordans, so yeah, I had to do it. Had to do it. Is it true your dad and Michael Jordan sh- used to shoot hoops together? Is that what they say? Yeah. Is that, I heard this yesterday. I was like, your, your dad knows Michael Jordan. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's mad. People tend to not believe me, to be honest. When my dad told me, I didn't believe him either. I was like, "Way you stop!" Like you came to Ireland in the eighties and just stop. I didn't realize how much of a big deal he was in the states, especially in his hometown. Um, so I think when I went to the states from to South Carolina for the first time in my teens, and we got stopped everywhere that we went, I was kind of like, "Hey, maybe I do believe you." Um, you actually are quite a big deal here. But yeah, no, just through, throughout like junior college and college and stuff, they would have played a lot against each other and at trials and all this kind of crack. So yeah, it's gas. So it is true. He wasn't, he wasn't making it up going, oh, back in my day, I knew that. It's fella. true, yeah. yeah. Amazing. That's, that's a pretty Mad. cool connection. Um, yeah. So what's, what's the, the rest of 2020 looking like for you, Erica? I'm literally just putting my head down. I told myself um, when the other restrictions were lifted, I was like, well, okay, I want to just spend from the end of summer to Christmas just, you know, working on all new music, hopefully get a little project together. And that's the plan. It's going really well, sounding really good. So, you know, I have high hopes for uh, next year too. So, but for now, I'm going to, I'll leave you enjoy calculated for probably the remainder. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm just giving you a song. Don't be, don't be asking for another one. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> Great. Well, we are loving it. It is our I Love Irish track of the week. Calculated. Erica Cody, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Here we go. Music. Lifestyle. Entertainment. News. Sports. iRadio. Live life louder.